Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of You Better Believe It, the show where Josh and Chuck, myself, takes you inside our studio here where we record our podcast and we take you inside the world of the internet in our own little uh, SYSK.0. That's what we should have called it. Well, maybe we'll call it that next. That'll Give it a the, couple weeks. The third iteration. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, so we basically just find some cool newsy items. Some of them have to do with the shows we recorded. Some of them don't. Sometimes we offer corrections. But at any rate, we're going to start this week with a story about cocaine. In Scotland. Did we do a podcast on cocaine? We did, didn't we? Or we did just one meth? on crack. And meth. Right. And marijuana, but not cocaine. No, just right. crack. Well, that's going to happen then. Um, so Scotland apparently is enjoying the dubious honor right now of being the world's number one consumer of cocaine per capita. Yes. One in every 42 Scots use cocaine. That's a that's a high number. That's the highest in the world. One in 42 people? One in 42. Um, I couldn't find it for the U.S., but Scotland beats the U.S. Apparently since 2006, consumption in the U.S. has dropped dramatically. Yeah. Apparently it's gotten harder to find, possibly because they moved it all to Africa en route to Europe. Oh, really? Yeah, remember we did an, um, a, a podcast on narco states and we yeah. talked about Guinea-Bissau is like basically just run by Colombian drug dealers yeah, now? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they moved everything to Europe. And as a result, apparently, the, the whole thing uh, has gone down in the U.S. while it's gone up in Europe. Right. Supposedly, it's not gone up anywhere more than it has Scotland. But we probably lead the world in bath salts. Man, do you remember that? Was that even a real thing? Bath salts? Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought it was like maybe just an urban legend or a no. misunderstanding by the media and that these people were really just on meth or PCP. I think it's a real thing. Mm, I don't know. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think it was basically bad reporting. Well, you know what? We'll settle it on a you better believe it of the future. All right. Our bath salt's real. Deal. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, one in 42 Scots uh, compared to England, which is one in 50 in Wales. Yeah. And... Um, the Scots are not uh, taking to this kindly, though. No. Because they say, you know what, this is, uh, basically, they don't accept these numbers. No, and they have a pretty surprising reason why. They're all cooked up? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. They have the what they call the most robust data in the world. And they accuse other countries, specifically the U.S. and um, Australia and Wales or New Zealand, um, of underreporting. Oh, okay. So basically they're saying we Scots are known for our honesty in data reporting. Yeah. And we just put it all out there. Everyone else didn't. So our numbers look worse than they are. Yeah, and how can you really get an accurate number anyway? Well, they're saying their numbers are accurate. They they aren't contesting the idea that one in 42 Scots use cocaine. It's all reported, though. What they're challenging is the idea that that is the most in the world. Yeah. All right. Poor Scotland. I'll they also that. ranked third in ecstasy use behind Australia and New Zealand. The bronze medal for ecstasy consumption. Yeah. So, sorry, Scotland, and you hear that? Yeah. Oh. Changed in tone. Somebody's got a leaf blower out on the streets of Atlanta. Man, I think leaf blowers <laughs> are one of the worst inventions of all time. If I had a dime for every time you told me that. Um, let's move on to Bangkok. All right, you found this pretty neat thing. Um, yeah, go ahead and... So you know I'm into like abandoned everything. Yeah. And abandoned malls in particular are just really cool to yeah, me. Yeah, agreed. As a matter of fact, I put together a world-class slideshow of nine abandoned malls around the U.S. Very creepy. Yes, and you could check it out on stuffyoushouldknow.com. Awesome stuff. Yeah, it all just looks like the apo- post-apocalypse. That's why it's so scary. The, but there's something about it, especially that there's no zombies or dead people or anything. It's just abandoned. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but there's something about an abandoned mall. Like, it used to be so vibrant and full of life, and now it's just dead. No piercing pagoda. No. No sunglasses hut. Right. No uh, international mail. Orange Julius. Orange Julius. We could go on for a (laughs) while. But in this particular mall in Bangkok, the New World Mall, there's a new koi pond that kind of came up out of nowhere, accidentally, actually. Yeah, it's an 11 story mall built in 1982 and shut down in 1997 uh, when the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration said uh, the owner 
only had permission to construct a four-story building. Right. So 15 years later, they realized it was 11 stories. Right. So they actually said, you don't have to shut down, but you have to get rid of these extra seven stories. Yeah. They did. And then apparently two years after that, they did shut down because there was a fire. They said, forget it, it's not worth it. Yeah, and it didn't have a roof. No, the fire burned the roof out. Yeah, and they so, left it that way. Yeah, so they had w- it what turned into, and that's on this busy intersection in, in Bangkok. We have some pictures that are right here. You can't see them right now, but they're right there. Yeah, um, uh, It's this huge building without a roof with escalators and stuff still, and rainwater started collecting and filling up and made a pond, and it became like this breeding ground for mosquitoes. Yeah, 500 square meters. So, but the mosquitoes became a, a big nuisance, and some local merchants around the area said, what can we do about this? Let's put some fish in there. They did. And the fish, uh, they propagated, to say the least, and there are koi and catfish, and it became, um, before it was on Facebook, 10 to 20 people a day knew about it and would go by and, mm. and visit it. Right. After Facebook, things got a little bit out of hand. Yeah, so much so that the the Bangkok city authorities are saying, oh, everybody, we need to put up a blockade because this might not be safe for you. Yeah, but aren't they going to check and see if it's safe and perhaps open it back up again? Yeah, or else they're going to tear the whole thing down. But at the very so, least, for a brief shining moment, there was a neat impromptu koi pond. Oh, and we should say that if they shut it down and tear the whole thing down, yeah. they're, they plan on removing the fish, moving them elsewhere rather than just yeah. like... Imploding. Tumbling everything <laughs> down on top of them, being like, be, good luck. That'd be very sad. And we got this article, by the way, from Oddity Central, which is a great website. So, is there a mall that is now a natural koi pond? You better believe it. You better believe it. Are we doing that still? No, we just did. But it wasn't as cheeky. But we had, it's a catchphrase. Like, we're making a catchphrase. A catchphrase is only a catchphrase if it catches on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. So until next time. You better believe it. <laughs>